Systema means system, and what I describe in this paper is the way Ukraine functions, if you like, the model of governance, which is quite distinctive, because Ukraine functions on a, a model which you see in some other European countries, places like Bulgaria, Romania, Greece, where the, the interests of a small number of business owners and their associates predominate over the public good. And this leads to a distortion of economic priorities. Um, it results in weak accountability, low levels of transparency, and in a way, the rigging of politics. Ukraine has been struggling for, uh, I would say, uh, at, at least the last 15, if not more years, to change this system of governance. And the underlying system has proved extraordinarily resilient. When President Zelensky swept to power in 2019 um, with his remarkable victory, he was somebody who came out, uh, came from outside the uh, traditional power group with a mandate to change the, the way Ukraine operates, to, to change the system of governance. And he started um, with uh, great gusto, a uh, great deg degree of optimism as an outsider, and I would say probably also a high degree of naivety. And although he um, invited a reformist government um, to get to work, he quickly ran up against the core interests of this underlying system. And that, in fact, led to really sort of quite a sharp turn uh, away from what many would regard as um, you know, progressive reformist policies. Um, and the result is um, possibly you know, a much more watered down form of uh, that reformist agenda, which runs counter to what the majority of the population is seeking in Ukraine, which is for the country to be governed better. The main stakeholders, if you like, uh, are the owners of big business who predominate in industries such as uh, energy, mining, media. And I, I uh, pains in the paper to uh, avoid this term that's widely used in Ukraine, which I don't particularly like, which is that of oligarchs, that um, Ukraine is, is, is run by, it will, operates on the, the basis of an oligarchy. It's in fact much more complicated than that, and I think we, we can actually sometimes overestimate the power that these people have, the, the big business owners, they have a high degree of influence unquestionably, and they've shaped the, the country's uh, economic priorities, they've ensured in, in many ways that it, it, it hasn't been able to advance down a, a reformist path because those reforms have undercut uh, their, their interests, but they don't have total power, they have to share power to, I would say, quite a significant uh, degree. What will ultimately make a difference is a new um, and, I, I would say, properly qualified group of people coming into the political system who are able to you know, drive forward in a more competent fashion um, a reform process and continue to benefit from public support to do so. So a number of things have to coincide for that to happen in Ukrainian political and you know, economic uh, realities. But I don't think that coincidence is uh, out of the question. Um, in fact, in some ways, I think it's sort of increasingly likely that that will happen because Ukraine's going to have no alternative. And sometimes you know, countries, when they're put under pressure um, and, and their populations are put under pressure, they find surprising levels of uh, resilience, of innovation, and indeed determination. The next 20 years um, are going to be very demanding for Ukraine, but I think they offer the opportunity for, itself, for, for it to really anchor itself on a European course of development um, and to, to further consolidate its sense of uh, nationhood, it, its, its determination to achieve this um, improvement for its citizens. So, um, in a way, the ball is in the Ukrainians' court and they have to decide how they're going to play it.